I wish I could tell you in the midst of the current Omni crisis that at least scientists connected to the Wuhan lab leak aren't doing more dangerous experiments that could lead to another pandemic and that Anthony Fauci wasn't potentially involved in a massive cover-up in the last one. But I can't. <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders, wherever you may be. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having the faith and fearlessness to continue moving forward in the midst of so much chaos and craziness all around the world. It's so important that you follow us if you can. Download the Rumble app, turn on the notification bell, then you'll know every day when we stream at five, you can join us because we are serious now. We're serious about this movement. Here on this channel, we talk about the establishment and its globalist problems. We critique them elsewhere. If you want to become a member of our community, we move towards solutions. How are we going to solve this? How are we going to solve this together? Join us if you can. We want you. We need you. We love you. Now, you'll be astonished to learn, will you? Are you astonished to learn? Let me know in the chat that the scientists involved potentially in the Wuhan lab leak are still doing dangerous, contagious, unnecessary experiments that could lead to another pandemic. And if the idea of another pandemic seems familiar to you and potentially real, that's because some significant global global figures keep talking about the next pandemic, the next pandemic. Like almost it's going to be war, pandemic, war, pandemic, war, pandemic. So in the end, just, all right, I'll just stay in the house and shut up. It's not up to you. We've already decided that you are staying in the house and shutting up. What, uh, uh, what did we tell you? We need to be prepared for the next pandemic. When the next pandemic comes knocking and it will, well, if it knocks, just don't answer the door. We must be ready to answer decisively. We do need more money. Oh, God. More. But we don't just need more money for vaccines for children eventually. We need more money to plan for the second pandemic. There's going to be another pandemic. Another pandemic? You've only just stopped playing with the last one. That's why we need the money. We will be much better off. Yeah, you will be. The next pandemic. I know. It's in the checks. When it occurs. Okay, so they all seem pretty confident there's going to be another pandemic. But also, the scientists involved in the Wuhan lab leak are doing more experiments that are a bit like that, even though really, the last time they did it, it probably caused this pandemic. More and more of us accept that as the reality now. Let me know on the chat if you're still entertaining the idea that it came from a wet market, disgusting though they may sound. So let's get into this story with a little more detail. And later, and you'll love this, we're talking about how Anthony Fauci, unbelievably, the fellow that was meant to be coordinating to a degree the global response to the pandemic, was involved in covering up some pretty important facts. Scientists linked to Wuhan bat researchers have been accused of performing dangerous experiments on a MERS-like virus that could spark a pandemic. Well, they should certainly interrogate and investigate that possibility to see if there's any truth in that. A team from the University of North Carolina published a paper in Science Advances detailing how they had synthesized a MERS-like bat virus and used it to infect human cells and humanized mice. I never feel that good, do you, when I hear the phrase humanized mice? I never think this research is in the right hands. I'm going to just start routinely now outside laboratories going, have you got mice in there? We certainly do. What business is it of yours? Are they hu humanized? No, they're not humanized. Can I get some cheese? What was that? N nothing. I, <coughs> I sneezed. I sneezed like that. Let us out of here. There's only eight of us. How can this be a thorough clinical trial? Listen, I've got to go. I've got normal mice to go and deal with in there. They're not humanized. MERS is one of the deadliest viruses, killing around 35% of people that infects. 35%. That seems like a lot. That's like you really don't want to get that one. I'll wear a mask for that one. The team includes Professor Ralph Barrick and Trevor Scobie, who worked with Professor Shi Zengli of the Wuhan Institute of Virology before the pandemic, creating chimeric viruses by inserting spike proteins from bat viruses into the original SARS virus. I don't sound like a Luddite, and I know that so many important things have been achieved as a result of biochemical endeavour, biological ingenuity, chemistry, science more broadly. What a wonderful discipline it is. And you will know from my conversation with Dr. Jay Bhattacharya from Stanford University, that I admire, adore, and revere. A subset of at least genuine scientists. And one of the conditions I would say for being considered a genuine scientist is related to funding. When science becomes a subset of at least an endeavour to accrue profit rather than heal and help people, problems emerge. And when there's an agenda that goes even beyond that, I think we're at even greater risk. Let me know in the chat if you agree. The new experiment used a reverse genetics technique to create a MERS-like bat virus called BTCOV1. 
which was collected by Xi Zhengli's team in China in 2019. The scientists said they'd performed the latest study to test whether antivirals would work against an infection. But experts warned the experiments were needlessly risky for little gain. <laughs> Needlessly risky. My God, these risks! You don't even need to take them! What's the potential gain, though? Very little. So, what the hell are you doing? Can I get my cheese now? Listen, just, would you get out of my lab? Open some windows on the way out. Anton van der Meer, professor of molecular immunology at Oxford University, told The Telegraph, because coronaviruses evolve rapidly, these experiments carry the risk of generating variants which are better able to infect human cells, and therefore, dot, 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 humans. Oh, there's no precedent of that happening. Oh, wait, yeah, no, our, all of our lives, everyone in the world, regardless of where you were, as a result of this stuff. You know what, though? What if it was more dangerous? Killing a third of everyone. Depopulation. Human and equipment error means that infection of those performing the experiment is a risk, and the infected individual could then spread the infection outside the laboratory and initiate a pandemic. Conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists, how do you know there's no wet markets or damp coffee shops or stinky fruit and veg stores around there? Before you jump to racist conspiracy theories, like doing this type of research definitely causes pandemics, why don't you just look around and see how much moisture there is in all of the facilities nearby, you bloody conspiracy theorists. The consequences would be potentially devastating and it's not clear to me what the benefits are. Oh no, they're doing all this stuff for no real reason. It's so mad. It's gone out of control, hasn't it? We need radical re-evaluation of the very pillars of society. The media tells lies. The government represents against the interests of the people. Science that's telling you that they're looking for cures for stuff are actually curing things that they're creating themselves that are worse than anything that's out there already. It's gone mad and and I don't really know, other than forming separate systems and advocating for radical change pretty fast, what else we're supposed to do. There's no prospect of using such work to develop a vaccine or antiviral drugs since these can only be tested in humans during an actual pandemic. It seems to me this experiment is simply not justified. What's going on? Professor Barrick developed the reverse genetics technique, which not only enables a virus to be brought to life from its genetic code, but allows scientists to mix and match parts from other viruses. It's like they're like just trying to have fun, isn't it? Like, okay, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Mix and match and bringing genetic code to life. It's not Mr. Potato Head, it's a deadly virus. I know, but we've given this one a big nose. No, <laughs> that's pretty funny. However, experts said that the same experiments could have been carried out by inserting the spike protein of BT Cove 42 into a harmless pseudovirus. Well, where's the fun in that? The pseudovirus experiment should have been the first thing they did before making this live virus, said one scientist who chose to remain anonymous so that he could keep his job and keep his funding and not be called a heretic and flung out of the lucrative science world. They went straight to testing a live virus in human cell culture and they performed experiments in everybody's favourite, humanised mice, which presents a higher risk of escape than just cell culture. Me and I can't here anymore. Look, we're just mice. What are we going to do? Well, you see that cage? I've been thinking about it. If we could hang the water bottle up there and weigh it down with this grain and those weird little pellety things, we could be out of here in no time. I mean, I'll try it. You seem confident. I am confident. I'm humanized, baby. You should probably stop smoking. Ah, man, the virus is going to kill me. <laughs> if I'd seen these sorts of results for a pseudovirus, I would have said that it should stop there. The virus is a potential threat. Don't proceed to using a live virus. So this guy would have stopped it, nipped it in the bud. They've already gone straight to the bit where they're, they're clacking around, mixing and matching, living it up, having a great time there. Experts also warned that the experiments were performed at a biosafety level, BSL-3 level, rather than the highest BSL-4 safety level. These mad, evil Knievel, radical gadabout, nitwit scientists performing these experiments, not even at the highest level of safety. It's not like there's been a massive pandemic probably caused by lacklustre standards at a laboratory and it's leaked out because they were doing it at bio level 3 or 4 do it at a high level. Hey man, I don't do my experiments according to your rules. I'm out there, I got one eye shut, I'm smoking, I'm high, I'm mixing and matching. I see my experiments like jazz. That's not how this should be conducted. Accidental releases from BSL free labs are unfortunately quite common, added Professor Van der Why don't we rename these safety levels? Instead of BSL free, which is meant to be the second most safe one, that should be called accidents are actually quite common level. That's like, if you want a high likelihood of an accident, just do this. That shouldn't be one of the levels, unfortunately. 
unfortunately quite common. Should it scrap that level, innit? Except for unless you're doing things like, you know, new colours of Skittles we're working on here. Alright, we'll do that at BS3. Worst thing is going to you get some dye on your hands or one of your humanised mice might get a bit of a sugar rush and run out to the street and get run over by an electric scooter. Anything that could kill anyone. New levels of safety, shall we? And here's a sentence that it seems plainly obvious to anybody. Experiments on potentially pandemic organisms should only be performed if there are clear benefits to humanity and should be performed at the very highest level of containment. Yes! All right, so that's still happening on the planet that you live on. All those things that are so complicated and awful, you don't even know how to talk about them. You know, this we do know how to talk about, don't we? Just stop bloody doing it, you absolute mad lunatics. Now, let's have a look at whether or not Anthony Fauci actively repressed information that could have helped us to have understood the nature of the last pandemic a bit earlier, or he had some reason for keep saying, it must have come out of a wet market, it must have come out of a wet market. What's that reason? Oh yeah, right. If it was caused by poor standards in a lab that had connections to United States funding, then the very person who's in charge of the response is at least tangentially responsible for the whole fiasco. Seems ridiculous that you'd even have to consider that. More ridiculous yet that it's possibly true. Starting in February of 2020, from the very beginning, Anthony Fauci knew he was involved with funding this lab and he did everything possible. It's throughout our government. Eight different agencies in our government are covering up their support for this lab in Wuhan. It's ongoing as we speak. That is not a positive news broadcast right there, is it? I mean, the Dow is going up, but Gaza is on fire and Anthony Fauci appears to have been deceiving us throughout the pandemic and right from the offset of the pandemic, possibly because he had a vested interest. And of course, Anthony Fauci doesn't do that job anymore. Even though we've had a uh, unanimous Congress declassified information. I have classified, uh, unclassified information that's being withheld from me to this day. But we have evidence, yes, that they were dishonest, that Anthony Fauci lied in hearings to me, which is a felony, punishable up to five years. We now have emails that show him saying that he knew it was gain of function, that the virus looked manipulated, and that he was worried that this came from the Wuhan lab. February 1st of 2020, then he spent the last three years saying, nothing to see here. Just note that your first instinctive response is closer to the truth than what they were telling you. Wuhan, have they got labs there where they're doing experiments? Yeah. How are they getting the funding for those labs? Is America involved anyway? Yeah. Do you think that they're possibly covering that up so that they don't look culpable for this whole damn global disaster? Yeah, right. We're getting finally to what people were just saying in the first place. Okay, good, right, if you're still with me. Now, just look at everything else that's going on. What else can't you say? What else can't you talk about? What other voices that are dissenting are being shut down? What other motivations do you think there are behind mainstream media narratives? You're probably right. Have a little guess. You're probably right. We also know that there was a safety committee that should have reviewed this. And we know that Anthony Fauci went around the safety committee. The safety committee set up in place to make sure this wouldn't happen. Never saw the Wuhan funding because Anthony Fauci allowed the funding to go around the safety committee. Oh man, that's not good, is it? So it's not just, oh no, I've accidentally been funding that. It's like, oh, that's dangerous. Well, we better fund it in a off the books type way. Oh man, like just pause for a moment to think about what the legacy media do with their resources. Are they investigating this? And it's Rand Paul who's uncovering this. You get journalists like like Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi and Barry White, you get like actual journalists, they'll try and go, well, should we try and work out the truth here? But people that work for the legacy media, they won't do that because they can't because the function of the legacy media is to amplify the message of the powerful and normalise the agenda of the powerful. They just normalise, okay, we're all in this together. Yeah, Anthony Fauci's a hero. Woo, let's all lock ourselves in the houses. Yeah, wear a mask. It's works. And remember what you're saying then. Hey, who are the biggest advertising? Where do they get their revenue from? Hey, like all of that stuff was just totally true. This is a bombshell revelation and this will eventually bring down Anthony Fauci. Oh well, some good news. Let's have a look at that in more detail. The former director of the US National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who led the US government response to the coronavirus pandemic, visited CIA headquarters to influence its review of COVID-19 origins, the House Oversight Committee reported in September. Last month, committee chair Brad Wenstrup made headlines when he revealed revealed that seven CIA analysts with significant scientific expertise on the agency's COVID-19 discovery team, CDT, received performance bonuses after changing a report to downplay concerns about a possible lab origin of the virus. It looks like maybe it came from a lab. What if you were to say that it didn't come from a lab? Oh, well, but maybe it does. I know, but what if it didn't? 
Okay, it didn't have a bonus. What's that? That's right. I mean, that's not good, is it? It's not follow the science. It's not I am science. If you argue with me, you're arguing with science. Have a look at my conversation with Jay Bhattacharya, who went through a month of absolute hell, lied about, humiliated, attacked from all angles. We're choosing wrong people. We're vilifying people we should be listening to. We're maligning and deplatforming people that are telling us the truth. We've got to make some changes, baby. Now, a months long investigation by Racket and Public, which included interviews with the CIA whistleblower behind last month's revelations and others in a position to know, reveals that Fauci not only visited the CIA, but also pushed the controversial proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2 paper published by Nature Medicine in meetings at the State Department and the White House. <gasps> those people that said this is like a massive cover up, this is going to be one of those stories that defines an age, it's worse than Watergate, it's worse than some of the other conspiracy theories that increasingly look like they're bloody true. They're right. They were right. You were right. Previous reporting already showed that Fauci prompted the proximal origin in paper according to its authors. Lead author Christian Anderson expressed grave doubts about the natural origin theory even months after Nature Medicine published the paper and they described themselves as pressured by higher ups referring to individuals in the White House and other government agencies. The media normalised that idea. They just bombarded you with wet market, wet market, natural origin, natural origin to the point where something that was plain and obvious like that Institute of Virology became sort of eventually it was just too obvious to be ignored but it was ignored, it was denied for a very long, even now, it's not like people are going, yeah, of course, of course, is it? You still sort of can't even say that. That's because we don't live in reality. We live in a curated psychological space created by very powerful interests, amplified and normalised by the legacy media. The only way to bypass that is through independent media channels like this one, which is why independent media channels like this one are demonetised. And that's why we need to help press the red button, join us. Now, the new information from multiple sources, including a CIA whistleblower, a senior government investigator and a senior official, suggests a broad effort by Fauci to go agency by agency from the White House to the State Department to the CIA in an effort to steer government officials away from looking into the possibility that COVID-19 escaped from a lab. Follow the science. Follow the science around every one of those agencies. Follow the science around the talk shows that held sort of celebratory parties where Anthony Fauci was portrayed as a big ahead for that time of crisis. Oh, Trump, that crackpot. Thank God for Anthony Fauci rolling his eyes. Well, if it proves to be true that he went agency by agency suppressing the truth, if it proves to be true that he deliberately created a funnel for funding and masked that, that's where the mask was necessary, ironically, then what are you left with there? You are left with a public space that is built on deception. It's beyond propaganda. It's worse than anything I think we've seen taken collectively because now the power for these atrocities is amplified to saturation point and the only opposition that's likely is this type of opposition the great work of Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger and genuine legitimate journalists the great work of Jay Bhattacharya and other legitimate scientists Robert Malone people that from the beginning were like whoa 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 that these people have paid a very very high price I tell you now the stakes are getting high we're in a really significant position Fauci's expert opinions were a significant consideration and were part of our classified assessment said the CIA whistleblower, a decorated and long-serving CIA officer with expertise in Asia. His opinion substantially altered the conclusions that were subsequently drawn. Manipulated the data. Fauci had reasons to push scientists and intelligence analysts to believe the virus had a zoonotic origin since his agency had issued a grant to fund research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, WIV, in China. Oh no, this is what people were saying all along. And you were called conspiracy theorists, weren't you? That's what they said. So yeah, we've already discussed yeah, where it is a badge of honor. If they don't want you speaking, you must be doing something right. If they're trying to shut you down, you must be doing something right. You absolutely cannot trust them. The Wenstrup press release noted that the whistleblower's information suggested Fauci was escorted in without record of entry. Oh, that's always good. Follow the science. Can't follow the science. Never admits he's been anywhere. According to the CIA whistleblower, the CIA purposely did not badge Fauci in and out of the building so as to hide any record that he'd been there. Fauci came to our building to promote the natural origin of the virus, the CIA whistleblower said. He knew what was going on. I mean, you see all the redacted documents that are coming out. He was covering his ass and he was trying to do it with the intel community. I know he came multiple times and he was treated like a rock star by the Weapons and Counter Proliferation Mission Center. And he pushed the Christian Anderson paper. I don't know that he was treated like a rock star on any level at all, do you? It sort of irritates me. Grant records show that Anderson had a multi million dollar NIH grant proposal pending while he wrote Proximal Origin. Fauci's oversight of the power and the fact that he had an author's grant on his desk put him in a clear position of power over scientists' conclusions. 
Oh no, he was able to influence it by suggestion, by holding grants and the offer of grants. People tell you this is how it works all the time. The amount of funding available to them means that they, that's not science, is it? Because science would be, well, let's take funding out of it. Let's just look at the available data. This is the reality of it. Science is a subset of a set of vested interests. That's why only these clinical trials take place. Only that information is released. This information is bypassed. That theory is promoted. That theory is shut down. That's no longer science. That's just science as a tool of the agenda of the powerful reported as objective science by a complicit legacy media who received their funding by advertising from pharmaceutical companies. There you have it. A convergence of interest. But how could it be? How could it not be true? It's just crazy to think that the one person who was presented as the voice of reason, the reliable weather vane and bulwark of our sensible response to this terrible condition could be actually part of the cause, part of the problem, concealing the truth, anti-science. I mean, it's almost biblical. In 2022, the CIA revisited its origins investigation, according to the whistleblower. In one meeting that year, Fauci berated a CIA analyst to express the view that COVID came from a lab, according to a whistleblower. Six out of seven analysts concluded that a lab leak was most likely. It's only six sevenths, and the seventh one had been berated. But then, after the intervention of senior agency personnel, the CIA changed its assessment of COVID's origin from lab leak to unknown, said the whistleblower. We don't know where it came from. Why don't we just guess or say that it's a wet market. I read that somewhere. Yeah, I wrote that. It's astonishing that something that significant, influential and impactful could have been conducted in this way. And as I've said, and as we've discussed many, many times, the COVID pandemic was unique to some degree. But I would offer you this. Regard it not as a unique and anomalous occasion, but as a lens, a window. How do these institutions behave? How do the agencies that are supposed to regulate pharmaceutical research actually behave? Do they have financial ties? How do figures that are meant to represent the health interests of an entire nation and on an occasion such as that, the world actually behave? How does the media actually behave? How does the government actually behave? The WHO, the WF, what it did is it revealed to us. That's why it was such an extraordinary event. That's why it was utilized to create authoritative measures and to shut down dissent and increase surveillance and surveillance measures like passports and different forms of ID and to increase censorship and shut down dissenting voices because something happened that was literally global and so much was revealed as a result. The first thing they have to do is have the ability to control the narrative if they can't control the narrative, they're in trouble because none of us are going to tolerate that if we understand it. I used to say this before the age of the internet. What do you think's in classified documents? What do you think's in top secret information? What do you think's in there? Oh, this is just information. If our enemies got our hands on it. No, it's not. It's information. If we had it, if you just said, right, this is how we run the country. This is what's really been going on. That's what happened to JFK. That's how all these things went down. Obviously, what's in that documentation, in fact, the raison d'etre of those documents and of classification itself and of those agencies is to prevent you from ever understanding how you are truly governed and controlled. Because if you knew what was in those documents, you would not cooperate. You would not obey. It would shock you to the very core of your being. We are beginning to understand this now, that our most treasured and cherished institutions require radical reform and that it will not come from within the system itself. We know that now. So just let me offer you this. If you had access to this information, you would know that the only route is radical change, disobedience, revolution. How should we be behaving now then? Now that we're beginning to understand the truth, the reality, the reality they keep from us. Let me know in the chat. The CIA gave the analysts exceptional performance awards that came with cash bonuses. Total bribery, total observable, traceable corruption. Is there going to be a test for that? There was a clear lack of interest in a robust analysis of Chinese military connections to WIV research and connections that could be drawn between US research and WIV activity, the whistleblower said. In letting foul Fauci secretly influenced analysts behind closed doors, the CIA may have allowed Fauci to promote his own personal interests, undermining the scientific integrity of the agency's investigation. Despite his claim that he did not try to exert influence over investigations into COVID's origin, Fauci had a clear motive to divert attention from the Wuhan lab. So there you are. Perhaps when the next pandemic comes, and evidently it is, not just because some of the world's most powerful vested interests are telling you that it's coming, but because simultaneously Simultaneously, none of the lessons of the last lab leak, if indeed it was one, have been learned. The same scientists are conducting yet more dangerous research. I don't want it. You don't want it, I assume. And yet it's still happening. We know that Anthony Fauci, who was presented to us as the figurehead 
a paragon of truth and authenticity is now seeming to be its direct inverse. All of our values are being flipped. The truth is being replaced by fiction. Villains are being presented as heroes and vice versa. The whole reason for this cover-up is because it reveals the true nature of power. That power has become corrupted, out of control and requires radical intervention. And guess what? It's not going to come from within the system. Even though whatever hope you have for whatever figurehead you're backing, what would happen if they were placed, dropped into that cesspool? Let me know if you think any individual can really make a difference. No, we have to all change. We all have to participate in change. We have to radically change as individuals and we have to be willing to sacrifice and make the necessary changes in our own lives and in our communities and to demand democracy by any means necessary except, of course, violence. Should they be carrying out those experiments now? Should Anthony Fauci be taken to task for his conduct if indeed this stuff is true? And I'd also, let me add this, stop making humanised mice. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the chat and the comments below. Have a look at this stuff. Remember, we stream 12pm Eastern Time daily. Click the link in the description to join us there. And if you want to become an Awakened Wonder, press the red button when you get there. Download the Rumble app. You'll get notifications whenever we make content. We need you now. We need you more than ever. This is serious. This is real. You know that, right? More important than any of that is if you can, please stay free.